this is a comedy of errors. I have been on probably 15 shoots with Jesse Ventura in the last two seasons in this season of Conspiracy Theory. When they're out in the field and we're at some government facility or something, it's live, it's 100% real, it's, it's happening. But when you sit down to do an interview, sometimes the camera guys and lighting guys will take two hours to get ready. I've been there many times with Ventura's like, come on, let's get this done. And then he'll just kind of rant and rave about the New World Order and police state and stuff <clears throat> and issues. I mean, he, he's a real person. He's really passionate behind the scenes about these issues. He'll talk to a waiter. He'll talk to troops at the, at the, um, at the airport. He will sit there and talk at people. And so what happened is Ventura rode the train for a day to get there uh, to meet in Cleveland, Ohio, with David Icke, where he was speaking. And in, in, in reality TV, they do not want the people that are about to meet to meet beforehand because they want it to be real. And so Ventura gets down there, and he's in one room, and right next to it's Icke. They're keeping him apart. He hears Ventura for an hour talking about issues. Ike is feeling like, Ike says, well, I'd like to go in and meet him. Ike's a nice guy. He's like, I'd like to go meet him. You know, and they're like, no, 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 no. You can't meet with him now because it's just some, you know, mid-level or low-level, you know, uh, uh, person who's keeping the schedule. You know, you, and, and that's what he says in the article. He's like, no, 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 sorry, not right now. Didn't tell him why. So he sits there for over an hour hearing Ventura right in the next room, you know, basically saying, hurry it up and ah, this new world order and, you know, ranting about issues. And then Ventura comes in. And they sit down and they start doing the interview. And Ventura's like, give me bullet points. Boil it down. And, 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 and Ike's like, come to my nine-hour thing. And Ventura's like, I can't. I got to get back on my, you know, train. And uh, Ike's, well, then why? And, and, and then Ventura, and it's all described here, is like, come on. You know, tell me, you know, when did you see a lizard person? And Ike wants to get all into history and Sumerian texts and Garden of Eden and all this stuff. And then it's interdimensional or spiritual or whatever. And there's basically like a blow up is basically what he says. And he just got up and left. Now, I get a call last night from the Ventura camp. I'll just leave it at that. And, and they were upset. And they weren't even asking me to call Ike for them or what they should do. They were just telling me, have you heard about this? And I said, no, I haven't heard about it. And, they, and so I pulled up the article and read it. And I said, well, what I think you ought to do and I, and I, is contact David Icke because there's not many people at this level trying to wake folks up. We don't need people fighting with each other. I said, I, you know, called him turd in a punch bowl 12 years ago. It was wrong. I apologized for it. <clears throat> we need to maybe do a Skype interview since he's gone back to England where, you know, we could say we decided to, you know, try one more time with Ike and then let Ike somehow boil it down for him. Because, you know, Ike will end up being in the TV show like three, four minutes. So that's why they were like, you know, give it to us quick here. Crystallize it. And Ike's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Now, speaking to David Ike, reading his article, he's like, first, the arrogant one, Ventura, sits there for an hour making me wait, uh, bla you know, blabbering. Uh, well, no, that's because Ventura is so real. He, you know, he's in there talking about the New World Order. Then, uh, you know, Braverman wanted me to sign the release form first because this was obviously a setup. And I could see how it looked like a setup. No, they always want people to sign a release form in case something happens in the interview. And Ventura is going to ask hard questions. But that's just standard for TV. And, and, and David Icke was a national TV host. He, he knows that. But I can understand how this all looks. And then he also, the one thing Icke does that isn't fair, and, and I understand that David was upset, so I'm not attacking him. I've said things that I think are a little bit, you know, off color. He says, oh, they keep mentioning, you know, on TV how he was a Navy SEAL. Well, sorry, you know, don't Navy SEALs kill people? I don't think that's good. I'm not into killing people. Well, by the way, Jesse's anti-war and, 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 and anti-offensive war. So he's not into killing people either. Basically, I know Ventura. Sometimes he gets in, in kind of a grumpy mood. I'm, I'm sure that's what was going on. Ike had been super ill, so ill he almost didn't do the interview with us. And he still did the interview the day before, did the interview with them, and both guys aren't going to be pushed around, and they just clashed. Two tough guys, because, you know, Ike back in his day was a tough guy and champion soccer player, and, you know, I've read about him and stuff. He, he, he's not a wimp. And so, so the whole th deal is you get two tough guys together. They start arguing. 
Ike thinks it's a setup. It blows up. But Ike, and I mentioned here, he says, well, Alex said it was going to be a nice, friendly piece, and I'm sure Alex meant well and is correct. Uh, you know, he says, I have no doubt that Alex believed what he said to be true. But the problem was, you know, something else happened. David, you were on their show two years ago, and it was totally positive. What's happened here, David, is that Ventura is nervous covering these subjects, but he's covered all the hardcore things that can be proven. People want to hear this covered. And so this season, some of their episodes are subjects that Ventura uh, isn't uh, you know, entirely comfortable with. So he's going to put you on the hot seat. And, you're, and I always see David shine on the hot seat on international television and things. So David was sick. Ventura was in a grumpy mood. You guys need to get back on the phone, be friends, and not have this piece come out with the blow up and all this just because it makes interesting TV. It, it needs to, you guys need to be friends and agree to disagree and not let this happen so that all of your supporters on both sides start fighting with each other over this. Let's not divide and conquer here. I understand David's issue. We all need to be friends. That's what I have to say. With new financial dominoes falling each day. Okay, we are back live. I'm going to start in this segment and for about 15 minutes of the next hour air part of our Jim Rogers interview we did yesterday. Of course, the um, billionaire um, investor, hedge fund guru, the guy that uh, is credited with really um, helping uh, George Soros uh, dominate the markets early on, Guinness Book of World Record holder. We're going to be going to part of that interview I did last night. The whole thing's posted at prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com. And by the way, uh, there's just not the nightly news. There's all my films and so much more, almost nine years of material at prisonplanet.tv. we got a 15-day free trial running until the end of the month, and then we're going to end it. 15-day free trial right now at prisonplanet.tv. And I'm running a special through Christmas that I've never offered before, and it will end uh, after Christmas or around Christmas. It's a Christmas special. 18, all 18 of my films that are on DVD for $99.95, a $260 discount. And the small profit we make does fund this operation. So Infowars.com, you can do all your Christmas or holiday shopping at one fell swoop. Buy a couple of these and you really could. 18 gifts. 18 gifts. And it comes with the Citizen Rulebook and more. Available at Infowars.com. Okay, part of this is my intro to Jim Rogers. Then we'll go to break as he's introduced. Come back and uh, just continue airing it uh, into the next hour. Then I'll get into all this other news we've mentioned. But let's go ahead and go to the Jim Rogers interview from last night on the fact that it's a foregone conclusion, total global meltdown. Accurately predicted. I've got some of the news articles here and what he sees coming up uh, in the future. His latest best selling book is A Gift to My Children A Father's Lessons for Life and Investing. Uh, and uh, of course, you can also go to his website, Jim Rogers, that's R O G E R S dot com. And he's also a Guinness Book of World Record holder on multiple fronts. We'll get him to talk some about that. Now, uh, he joins us here while he's on his exercise bike in, in the beautiful, uh, I guess, semi-tropical uh, environs of Singapore. And so uh, we turn now to Jim Rogers joining us here at InfoWars Nightly News. Jim, thank you for joining us. I am delighted. And yes, it is Singapore. We're on the equator. In Singapore, it's either always hot or always hot and rainy. <laughs> well, I tell you, I, I've, I've probably watched you 300 times on national television, Fox, CNBC, you name it, but I don't think I've ever seen you on a uh, exercise bike. So we're honored that you're doing this with us. Well, I'm delighted. I'm multitasking. I you know, try to get two things done at once, so if I fall off the bike, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> okay, Jim. Wow. Now, 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 listen, there's a lot of stuff written in the press. I want to make sure this is uh, accurate. A few days ago, a, a bunch of reports came out that you said global collapse, a done deal. Um, what's your view on the world economy right now and where it's going? Well, Alex, every four to six years in America, we've had a slowdown or a recession ever since the Republic, the beginning of the Republic. So we're overdue for one, the end of 2011, 2012, 2013. So it's going, it always happens. It's gonna happen again, despite what politicians or central bank 
the bankers tell you. The next time around, it's going to be very bad. It's just as, you know, 2002, we had a slowdown. 2008, it was much worse. 2012, 2013 is going to be worse still because we shot all our bullets. I mean, the U.S. cannot quadruple its debt again. We cannot print more money money again, staggering amounts of money again. So it's going to be a mess, a huge mess. There's nothing we can do about it. Now, let's talk about, because I know you don't like to toot your own horn, but I've printed up a bunch of news articles here. I remember you three, four years ago saying what they did wasn't going to work, that you'd see all sorts of currencies going down globally, that commodities... To your own horn, but I've printed up a bunch of news articles here. I remember you three, four years ago saying what they did wasn't going to work, that you'd see all sorts of currencies going down globally, that commodities was the place to go, uh, and gold's gone from 300 to 1800, silver's gone from five dollars to 30 plus dollars. Uh, you're saying get into farmland. Uh, to your own horn, though, just so people can understand why you made the predictions you did. Uh, quite a bit of what you predicted has come true. Uh, break down how you were able to make those predictions, and then what you see coming uh, in the near future, and then even uh, the the medium term. Well, Alex, I, I partly because of I, mean, I know what's happened before in the world. In the early 1990s, Japan had a problem like this. They refused to let people fail. They propped everybody up. You remember the term zombie banks, zombie companies? Well, it's 21 years later. Japan is still suffering because they didn't accept reality. They didn't take the pain. The Japanese stock market is down 80%. That's 80% in the last 21 years because they refused to accept reality. America's going to have the same problem. We're going to try to prop everybody up. That does not work. In Sweden, at the same time, 21 years ago, in Scandinavia, I should say, they took the pain. It was horrible for two years, three years. But since then, after starting over, taking the losses, taking the pain, Scandinavia has had a wonderfully vibrant and dynamic economy. It just doesn't work to prop up failure, to reward incompetence. You have to, that's what capitalism is all about. Competent people come in, take over the failed assets from the failed people, and start over. What we're doing in America, we're taking the assets away from the competent people, giving them to the incompetent people, and saying, okay, guys, now you can compete with the competent people with their money. It's outrageous morality. Not that politicians care about morality, but it's horrible economics. It cannot and will not work. Well, uh, I'm certainly no rocket scientist. I mean, I'm not a guy that's made people tens of millions of dollars like yourself and you know, has a 30, 40 year track record of doing it. But studying economics, studying history, when you see a bunch of countries uh, start basically turning up the printing presses and then paying for the uh, garbage derivatives with more printing press money, uh, it seems like I've seen all these third world countries uh, go that direction. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, is that why basically you're saying that there's no way to turn this around, or what are some of the other factors that feed into that? Well, Alex, the cure for too much debt is not more debt, although in Washington they seem to think, well, we had too much consumption, too much debt, so let's solve that problem with more consumption and more debt. I mean, it's astonishing that grown-ups would say something like that out loud. If it were that simple, every country in the world would be prosperous. But what's always happened for this, you pile up debt, that fails, and then they start printing money. If all you had to do was pile up debt and print money, Zimbabwe would be the richest country in the world right now. Many countries would be extremely rich. It doesn't work. Economics is pretty simple. If you spend money you don't have, you either pay it back, or go bankrupt or suffer the consequences. We've already had one lost decade in America. We're going to have two, three, four. I don't know how many lost decades we're going to have until we accept reality. Okay. Uh, th then just to be clear, then, uh, you are saying that a global financial collapse is a foregone conclusion.